there's been a lot of questions about how the casing on Richard Allen's gun can be traced to his actual weapon, or how can he lose a round at the scene and not know it? And I thought I'd come on here and try to explain a little bit to some of you that aren't familiar with guns, how that could happen. So for purposes of this, I've got a new box of ammo. So none of these have been in a gun before. None of them have been fired. Just as if Richard Allen was taking those out of a box to put in his own weapon. Okay. This pistol is very similar to the one he used or allegedly used in the murders to intimidate the girls. It's a semi-automatic, has a slide just like the one he used there at the crime scene, allegedly. So when you first get the bullets out of the box, you have a bullet. This is your magazine. Some people call it a clip. When you go to load it, just as he would have done, you're holding the bullet like this, thumbprint right on the casing, number one. So he had to leave some kind of touch DNA or a thumbprint or fingerprint on the bullet. Magazine or clip, you push it in and push in and notice my thumb is all over that round. Okay, pushing in, I'm touching. There has to be something there to link him, DNA, touch DNA, a fingerprint, partial print on the casing itself. Okay. You put it into the weapon, like so. Then, this is called the slide. It's the caulking mechanism. When you pull this back, it puts a round that you just put in into the chamber. The gun is now ready to fire. Okay. In this state, it's ready to go. The theory is he probably had a full magazine. So he had several rounds in the magazine. One in the chamber, ready to fire. He goes to the girls. The girls say, oh, a gun. He says, get down the hill. They go down the hill. He has one in the chamber. He has the gun ready to go. To intimidate the girls, he probably did this. Okay. As he did that, you notice an ejected bullet left the firearm. That ejected bullet went into the leaves, the ground, next to the bodies, etc. It's now at the crime scene. Okay. Lays down the gun, pulls out a weapon, a knife, rope, whatever he did. Did what he did to the girls. In his confusion, his insanity, his whatever the hell was wrong with the guy. There's now a casing on the ground with his touch DNA, partial fingerprint, whatever. Also, the firearm itself will leave a distinct mark on the casing. Each weapon has its own distinct features, even if they're very, very minuscule. I mean, tiny. So on that casing that was ejected, I can't even find it in my office. So how would he find it in a bucket of leaves? And they come out really fast, so you wouldn't know. So on that casing that was ejected, there will be... Here, let me do it this way. I won't drop it in the leaves like he did. I'm going to try to get it to land right here close so I can find it easily. I'll eject another one. As you see... Okay, it ejected. Okay. I'm going to move this. All right. Inside the weapon, there's different pieces and parts, moving parts that work to eject the shell. On those parts, it's hard metal surface. On those surfaces, these are brand new bullets out of the box. I know you won't be able to see in my video, but on the casing itself, there will now be very, as tiny as they may be, there'll be lines or marks. I can see it right there. You guys probably can't see it. Out of this gun right here, a very tiny mark was left on here from the ejection process. That tiny mark, someone could take this bullet and find this gun at my house. They could eject several more shells, and as they do that, they can match up the ejected shells. The last two shells I ejected from this firearm will have the same exact marking on this case from the ejection process out of this firearm. 
I hope that helps explain kind of what is going on here, uh, some of my theory about it. And, yeah, hope it helps.